Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Amen. It's a blessing once again to come back to you to uh, complete this lesson tonight. I want to thank and praise the Lord that I'm blessed to be in the land of the living. I want to thank God that I'm yet saved and have a mind to live for Him. And as I so often say, I wouldn't take something for my journey right now. All right, let's get started. Uh, on the other night, we talked about we talked about being baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we talked about the Holy Ghost baptism, that is, being born of the Spirit. Amen. And we talked about how that every, every believer has been baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And as we said, for the most part, most people just stop right there. They stop at, at conversion. They stop at being uh, baptized into the body of Christ. And as we said, for the most part, it's probably because, uh, because it is not taught in the churches that there is anything after being born again, born of the Spirit. But according to the Word of God, the Bible wants us, the Lord wants us to be filled with His Spirit. He wants us to receive Christ's baptism into the Holy Ghost. And so when you receive Christ's baptism into the Holy Ghost, this is where you're going to speak in tongues. Now, I know we live in a day and time when people will relegate the tongues, speaking in tongues, to the past. They say, well, that, that left with the apostles. But we find nowhere in the Scriptures... Hear me, people, we find nowhere in the Scriptures, hear me, my friends and my brothers and sisters, we find nowhere in the Scriptures where the power of the Holy Ghost or where being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues went off the scene, all right? It's still operating in the church, amen. These gifts of the Spirit are, are still operating in the church today. So nobody can show us anywhere in the Bible where the gifts of the Spirit left with the apostles or whether speaking in tongues left with the apostles. And here's the thing about it. When, when the Lord fills you, baptizes you into the Holy Ghost, when Christ baptizes you into the Holy Ghost, He's going to give you a heavenly language. All right? So a lot of time people want to put emphasis on, on, on the tongues, but the emphasis is not on the tongues. The emphasis is on the Holy Ghost. Because here's the thing. When you when Christ baptizes you into the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the tongues are going to come with that baptism. So it's like, um, uh, let, let me see if I can kind of give you an example. It's sort of like uh, years and years ago, and, and even so today we still might have the situation today where these these kind of shoes are still made. You remember the kind of shoes of, uh, you know, that, that men would wear, uh, that we would wear years ago, uh, boys and men would wear years ago, where you would have the tongue with the shoe. And that is, you had a tongue in the center of the shoe where you the strings went over the tongue and you tied the shoes up. Well, that's a good example of, of, of the Holy Ghost in tongues, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost in tongues. In other words, the tongue is going to come with the shoe, or the tongues are going to come with the shoe. See, the tongue would come, the tongues would come with the shoe. When you, when you purchase the shoes, you got the tongues with the shoes. Well, that's the same way the, 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 the Holy Ghost is in tongues. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to bring tongues along with that filling. All right, so this is not something that we just uh, make up on our own or we just start, you know, just just uh, uh, speaking some kind of words or some kind of uh, language. Uh, this is this is we, we speak in tongues under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, as on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. See, they were under the utterance and the power of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So this is what's going to happen to you when you have been baptized by Christ into the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're going to be baptized by Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, and you're going to begin speaking in a heavenly language, a language that you cannot go to school. Amen. To, to learn Glory to God. So you're going to speak as the Spirit of God give you utterance. Glory to God. 
Now, uh, you know, for those of you that say, well, you know, those tongues are gone and, and, and they are not real and they are of the devil. As I, as I said before, you know, you, you're, you're putting yourself in, in a bad situation. You're putting yourself in danger when you say that because what you're doing is you're speaking against the Holy Ghost. And uh, the Bible tells us that, uh, you know, you can speak against Christ, but when you speak against the Holy Ghost, there is no forgiveness, amen, in this world or the world to come. So you don't want to be speaking against, amen, the power of the Holy Ghost. And to say that tongues don't exist or to say that that is not the power of God, that that is the power of Satan, uh, you are putting yourself and your soul in danger. Uh, so you don't want to say that, uh, amen, because this is the work of the Holy Ghost. This is what Christ does when he baptizes you into the Holy Ghost. And of course, speaking in tongues is going to accompany, amen, you're being filled with the Holy Ghost. All right, now, so what we want to do is we want to, we want to go to, so we're talking about part two, Christ baptizing the believer into the Holy Spirit. And as we said before, there are a whole lot of you out there in, those, in, in these churches, you have not been taught this. And this is why you tend to fear this, or this is why you are afraid of this, because you have not experienced this. And people who have not experienced the power of the Holy Ghost are being filled with the Holy Ghost. Now see, the, the thing about it, you have experienced uh, being uh, baptized into the body of Christ. Now you, you, you're already saved when you're baptized into the body of Christ. Please do understand this, my friends, my brothers and sisters. You are already saved when you're baptized into the body of Christ. Okay, and when you're baptized into the body of Christ, you don't speak with tongues. Amen. But just because you don't speak with tongues does not mean that you're not saved. See, you are saved before you speak with the tongues. All right? Speaking in tongues does not save you. Because there are some people who speak in tongues who are not speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. They are speaking under the inspiration of Satan and the power of darkness. As I told you before, God has tongues. And the devil has tongues. Amen. Everything God has, the devil has, because the devil is always going to imitate what God has so that he can deceive people, so that he can trick and deceive people. Now, you remember the time back in the Old Testament when, when Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let the people go? Said, God said, let my people go? And, and Moses began to uh, perform a miracle. He began to, to, to put his rod down. Uh, put put the rod down and, and his rod turned into a snake. Well, what happened? Uh, the, 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 the magicians came out and, and they were under the inspiration of Satan and they put their rod down. They put theirs down and it turned into a snake. But what happened? Moses' rod, when it turned into a snake, his snake ate up their snakes. See, showing that God has, has more power than the devil. It's God is more powerful than the devil or than Satan. All right? And then... On the other hand, the Bible tells us, tells us that Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. Now, the devil or Satan is not an angel of light, but he has transformed or changed himself into an angel of light to deceive you. So see, whatever God has, the devil has, because the devil is a counterfeiter. The devil is a copycat. Amen. The devil is out to deceive you, see. So if he can deceive you, if he can trick you and make you think, that what he's doing or what he has presented is God, then he has deceived you and tricked you. And that's why the Bible tells us that, that we as Christians, we are not ignorant of his cunning devices. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we know the tricks and the schemes of the devil. Glory to God. That's why we have to be filled with the Spirit of God and tune in with the Word of God and know the Word of God and, and have the Spirit of God. And then the Bible tells us to try the spirits. To see whether they be of God. Amen. Because every spirit is not of God. Uh, somebody said, well, the Bible said, try the spirit by the, by the spirit. Well, that, that's not the word of God. See, that's, that, that's, that's, that's false quoting. You're quoting the, script, the scripture falsely when you say the Bible say, try the spirit by the spirit. You don't try the spirit by the spirit. Because if you try the spirit by the spirit, you, you would be trying Satan by Satan. Glory to God. But you are to try the spirit to see whether they be of God. See, you are to test the spirit to see whether it be of God. Test every spirit 
by the Spirit of God to see whether it be of God. Glory to God. You don't try the Spirit by the Spirit. That's, 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 that's misquoting the Scripture. Amen. That's, that's inco incorrect quoting the Scripture. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the devil is a counterfeiter, and he's always trying to deceive people. Hallelujah. So tonight, as I said, we're going to talk about Christ baptizing the, the believer into the Holy Spirit. All right, now let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 8. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 1, verse 8. Glory to God. And we're talking about Christ baptizing the believer into the Holy Spirit. And once you get, once you have this experience, you're going to speak with tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what anybody says. We're going to go with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And all of you out there that are saying tongues are gone. They left with the apostles. You don't know the word of God. You need to be taught. You don't know the word of God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible does not teach that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now there are a whole lot of people who have taught that. And, and now they have had that experience. There are a whole lot of preachers who have taught that. <clears throat> and now they have had that experience. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, the names of some, some Southern Baptist preachers who uh, taught against speaking in tongues, filled with the, with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And they had that experience because they yield themselves to God and uh, they got to searching the Word of God and, and got to desiring uh, everything that God wanted them to have, and God filled them with the Spirit. Uh, he filled them uh, with the Holy Spirit, so therefore uh, they now have had that experience, and they, they are excited about what God has done in their lives. Now James Robinson, or Robinson, uh, however you pronounce his last name, he has had that experience now. Anybody that know James Robinson or Robinson, he has had that experience. Um, there is another uh, pastor. Hold on, just a, just a minute here, and let me get the let me get their names. There is uh, two other preachers uh, that have had that experience. Uh, if you've heard of Tom Smith, he's a Southern Baptist preacher who has been filled with the Spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Uh, have you ever heard of um, Ron Phillips? Ron Phillips is out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's a Southern Baptist pastor. Uh, who uh, was um, who who was affiliated with the affiliated with the Southern Baptist organization? Uh, I, I don't think he's affiliated with them now. He could very well still be, but I know it's been some controversy. Uh, you know, since he has been filled with the Spirit of God and began to uh, speak in tongues. And he also believed in the gifts of God. Of course, when you are filled with the Spirit of God and, and with the evidence of speaking in tongues, of course you're going to believe in the gifts of, of the Spirit. You're going to believe uh, that the gifts of the Spirit are yet operating in the church today in which they are. All right, so these three pastors, uh, these three men of God, these three Southern Baptist preachers are now preaching the full gospel. They now know that uh, the Holy Ghost is being are being poured out or people are being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues now because they have experienced it. All right, now let's go to Mark chapter 1 verse 8. And this is what it says. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. All right, this is what Mark said. Mark said, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, this is what John the Baptist said. John the Baptist said, I indeed uh, baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. All right, so John the Baptist said, I was sent to baptize uh, with water. Now, John, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me say something here. Uh, because my Baptist friends uh, have always uh, said that John the Baptist uh, was called John the Baptist because he was Baptist. But now let me help you out here, my Baptist friends. John the Baptist was not called John the Baptist because he was a Baptist. He was called John the Baptist because he was John the Baptizer. All right? He was called John the Baptist because he was John the Baptizer, because he was sent to baptize. Now, uh, let me get you to understand something. John the Baptist was not Baptist. John the Baptist was sanctified and holy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Harrison... What do you mean John the Baptist was sanctified and holy? Uh, how, how can you prove that? 
Well, we could we could simply simply go to I believe it's Mark six and twenty. Uh, let's turn there quickly to Mark six and twenty, and we'll come back to our lesson. Uh, Mark six and twenty. Let's see what it says. Glory to God. All right. Okay. Let's go to Mark six and twenty, and this is what it says. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and an holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. So John, uh, so it said, so Herod, Herod the king, Herod feared John because he was a just man and he was a holy man. So see, John the Baptist was a just and holy man. Glory to God. He was sanctified and holy. John the, ba John the Baptist was not Baptist. He was sanctified and holy. In fact, John the Baptist was a type of Christ. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Glory to God. So John the Baptist was not Baptist. He was sanctified and holy. See, nobody goes to heaven being Baptist. See? Nobody goes to heaven being Methodist. Nobody goes to heaven being Pentecostal. See, that, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You go to heaven because you have been born again. Glory to God. And when you are born again, that means that you are sanctified and holy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody that goes to heaven is sanctified and holy. You can't get around being sanctified and holy. I don't care who you are, whatever, whatever denomination you call yourself, you got to be sanctified and holy. So all you folk out there that say, well, I don't believe in that sanctified and holy stuff. Well, you don't believe in being born again. You don't believe in being filled with the Spirit. You don't believe in the Bible, and you don't believe in Jesus because Jesus was sanctified and holy. In fact, Jesus said, uh, uh, Jesus said I sanctify myself, glory to God, that you might be sanctified. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you got to be sanctified. You got to be set apart from sin, set apart from the world. All right. So we see John the Baptist said in Mark 1 and 8, uh, John said, I indeed baptize you with water, but one is coming and he, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So we want to be, we want Christ to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. All right. Now, so let's go to Acts 2 and 4. Glory to God. We're going to Acts 2 and 4. Glory to God. Take your Bibles and turn to Acts, the second chapter, verse 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're talking about Christ's baptism. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. All right. Acts chapter 2. Glory to God. Verse 4. Hallelujah. This is what it says. Acts 2 and 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. All right. Now let's go to verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but, he shall, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. All right. So on the day of Pentecost, of course, they're going to be baptized by Christ with the Holy Ghost. All right? So we want to receive Christ's baptism by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. All right? So on the day of Pentecost, let's go to um, glory to God. That was Acts. I'm sorry. That was Acts. Uh, I'm, that was not Acts 2 and 4. That was Acts 1. Amen. Chapter verse 4 and 5. All right? So let's look at that again. Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye, shall, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. All right, that's Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. All right, now let's turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Glory to God. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. All right. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Alright? So on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all baptized by Christ in the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak 
in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. So when you are filled with the Holy Ghost by Christ, you're going to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God give you utterance. Now, we're going to have to learn that there are different types of, types of tongues. So when you are filled with the Holy Ghost by Christ, you're going to speak in what you call an unknown tongue. All right? This unknown tongue is called unknown tongue because it is unknown to you and it is also unknown. It is an unknown language to the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this is going to be your communication between you and God. All right? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. All right? How be in the Spirit he speak mysteries. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right? So God desires to give you a language that you will communicate with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's God's business as to why he give us that language. Glory to God. That's why you can't fight against it. Glory to God. All of you that are out there that are saying, well, and, and people who speak in those tongues, they're, they're not speaking of God. That's of the devil. Uh, you, you, you are, you're in danger. Glory to God. And you are ignorant of the word of God. Glory to God. Now we got some of you out there teaching, calling yourself teachers and preachers, teaching and, and preaching against speaking in tongues and being filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't know the word of God and you need to get somewhere and sit down because you don't know what you're talking about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And see, as I said, people who tend to have not had this experience, uh, they, are the, they are the people who tend to fight against this, see, because they, don't, they haven't had the experience and they tend to fear it because they haven't had the experience. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But as I said before, we want all that God has to offer us. All right. Glory to God. All right. Now, let's go to... Um, Let's go, okay, let's, let me, let, let's go to uh, uh, Acts, let's go to Mark 16 and 17, all right? Because the, the believer will speak in tongues as stated in Mark 16 and 17. Let's go to Mark 16 and 17, all right? Let's go to Mark 16, the chapter, chapter 16, verse 17, and let's read that. Glory to God, hallelujah. Because once you are filled with the Holy Ghost, once you, you have been baptized by Christ in the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak, amen, in an unknown, unknown tongue or in an unknown language. All right? Mark 16 and 17, and this is what it says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover, all right? So all of these signs are going to follow you once you are filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God give you utterance, all right? So you need this power so that you can be, become an effective, effective witness and that you can have these signs to go out and do what God, amen, has given you to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, now let's leave Mark 16 and 17 and go to Acts 10, chapter 44. All right, let's go to Acts the 10th chapter, verse 44. We're talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All right, now later on, we're going to look at the scripture that talks about a man tongue still being in existence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And all of you that said tongues have been done away with, they left with the apostles, we're going to come against that, and we're going to dispute that. We're going to show you what the Word has to say about that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to prove and back up everything we say. Glory to God. We're going to prove all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to chapter 10, verse 44. Glory to God through verse 48. Let's see what that has to say. Chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. Glory to God. All right. This is what it says. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. All right. So now the Holy Ghost falling uh, and the Holy Ghost filling is the same thing. Understand that. The Holy Ghost falling and the Holy Ghost filling is still the same thing. All right. So while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. All right, so they of the Jews, uh, they were astonished or amazed that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit 
uh, was falling on them, uh, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So God wants the gift of the Holy Ghost, or He wants us to be filled. He want we as Gentiles, we as Gentiles, He want us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. All right. And the reason why they know that the Holy Ghost was poured out on them, or that or that they were filled with the Holy Ghost, is stated in verse forty six. This is the proof, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water that should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. All right, so we know that according to verse 46, we know that the evidence that a person has been filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost has been poured out or fallen on an individual, we know the evidence is that they're going to speak with tongues, all right? Look what it says in, in verse 46 for all of you people out there that don't believe the word and that deny what the word says about speaking in tongues when you're filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, all right? It says, look at verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, all right? So this is the evidence that these Gentiles had received or been filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost had fallen up upon them because they heard them speak with tongues and they began to magnify God. Now, when the, when, when the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak with tongues and you're going to begin to praise and magnify the Lord because when God does something for you, you're going to thank Him for it. You're going to appreciate when God pours His Spirit on you when he fills you with his spirit, that marvelous work that he that he does on you, glory to God, you're gonna thank him for it. Hey, glory, hallelujah. Now I just received a filling just on Friday. The Lord poured out the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He filled me with the Holy Ghost again. See, there is one baptism, but there are many fillings. What are you saying, Brother Harrison? I'm telling you that the Lord will fill you over and over and over again. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Hey, glory, moving right now. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So when the Lord fills you with the Holy Ghost, you're going to begin to speak in a heavenly language. Glory to God. So don't you listen to these devils and these people who don't understand the word and know the word and have not experienced the power of the Holy Ghost, God filling them with the Holy Ghost. Don't you listen to these people. Glory to God. You hear what the Lord is saying. You hear what the word is saying. Glory to God. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Now, because we want to keep these videos cut short, amen, because sometimes it's hard for people to sit and listen to a video uh, uh, for uh, 20, 30, and 40, 50 minutes to an hour, amen. So we're going to kind of keep them short. So at this point, amen, we're going to uh, cut this off and we're going to come back, amen, with a part three. Glory to God. So we'll be back in just a little bit to finish, amen, up this subject. God bless you.